Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation about graphical user interface in embedded systems. My name is Hidenori Matsubashi from Japan. This is my first talk at Embedded Linux Conference Euro, so I hope you enjoyed the talk. Today, in my presentation, I'm going to talk about Zero Toolkit. The title is Graphical User Interface Using Flutter in Embedded Systems. Okay. Now first, let me introduce myself. I've been working for Sony as a software engineer, and I've been developing the wide range of embedded software for over 10 years. I've experience both bring apps such as Qualcomm, NXP, and NVIDIA, and developing middleware of graphics and video. As for low-level layer, I've also experienced developing firmware, device driver, and etc. Now, I mainly use C++. Here is today's agenda. First, I will talk about the background about GUI in embedded systems. Next, I will talk about the overview of the new approach using Flutter. And then I will show you the demo video first. Finally, I will talk about details on our approach and demo video. First of all, I will talk about the background. So far, we've been searching suitable GUI toolkit or frameworks for embedded systems. There are several options including OSS, commercial software, and toolkit from SOC vendors. Naturally, we want to use a toolkit that exists in OSS. However, there aren't a lot of GUI toolkit available for especially our consumer embedded products in OSS. Why not? There are two main reasons. First, there aren't a lot of toolkits that meet our requirement. The other one is typical challenges on embedded platforms. And these are our requirements. Naturally, modern and high design, easy of development, and good performance are required. And then it is also important that it is easy to port to another platform even if the SOC or platform is changed. Software license is also sometimes important to develop proprietary software. I think this is common. Now, these are examples to your toolkit, but it doesn't include those that are limited to a specific platform such as Android and iOS. Qt and WebView, such as WebKit and Chromium, are often used in embedded systems. As for Qt, some of its tools are only available when you use commercial license. On the other hand, we think Flutter is one of the best toolkits for embedded systems as a new approach. Next, I will explain about WebView. We can generally develop GUI easily by using WebKit or Chromium as a WebView. However, there are also some cons. For example, WebKit is huge source code and needs a lot of dependent packages or libraries. Therefore, general introduction cost is higher and WebView is also need more performance than other toolkits. Especially, it is difficult to access directly local files or hardware resources from web apps because of security. So, when you use WebView, you need to use internal web server in an embedded system. In addition, in some cases, security measures may be required. Next, I will explain about some native toolkits such as ZTK, Qt, and SDL in this time. ZTK is a major toolkit in Linux. It supports cross-platform like desktops. 
However, it doesn't support modern UR like smartphone, so CTK is suitable for desktop apps. Next, Qt is very popular and it is often used in embedded products. It also supports RTOS, Android, and iOS platforms. But its software license is dual licensed and commercial and open source licenses. Finally, STL Simple Toolkit or Graphic Library. When you use simple menu or create game apps, because it has no widget for creating UI, so it's not suitable for normal UI. Now, let me build on Flutter we choose. Flutter is Google's new UI toolkit released in 2017. Features are building beautiful UI like smartphone, natively compiled apps, and support cross-platform from a single source code, and then program languages Dart. Here is Flutter architecture overview. Flutter mainly consists of three layers. First, Flutter framework is libraries for user applications. Developers usually create UI by using widgets or APIs provided by this framework. Next, Flutter Engine is the original rendering engine like web browser's rendering engine. It is written in C++ and user that source code works on that virtual machine and draw by using Skia Vector Graphics Library. Finally, Embedator is the protein layer for specific platforms like Android, iOS, Linux, and etc. Basically, you can port Flutter Engine to any platforms. So, I will explain why we choose Flutter later. Now, let me move on main second reason. Generally, when we develop embedded product, there are some challenges. As you know, development is usually done on different architectures, and resources such as CPU performance and memory size are limited. Especially supported display server by the BSP such as X11 and Wayland is important for GUI toolkit. So we need, need GUI toolkit that are more lightweight as possible and independent of hardware and architectures. Next. I will explain about BSP trends of supporting display servers. Here is the example list of some SOCs, boards, or platforms. NXP, Therynx, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, Broadcom, or Raspberry Pi. Many vendors support Wayland, and it may be gradually shifting to Wayland. NXP doesn't support X11 on some latest boards. Wayland is suitable display server for embedded systems. However, a lot of GUI toolkit aren't enough support for Wayland because they are based on X11 and still developing. For example, this is example app of ZDK. And then when I run this app in a Wayland environment, the drawing size is incorrect like this. So, it is unlikely that GUI toolkit will work perfectly in a Wayland environment. Therefore, we need to evaluate firmly before using. As you can see, there is an issue with the combination of Wayland and the GUI toolkit. Wrapping up the background. We were looking for toolkit that can be suitable for Wayland and embedded systems and has high functionality and designability like WebView. Let's move on to the next topic. 
I will introduce and explain about new approach in embedded system using Flutter and Veron to resolve the issues I told. I think Flutter plus Veron is the best practice in embedded systems using Linux. And why is it Flutter? Why is the combination of Flutter and Veron good? I think you figured out. And next is the reasons why we choose Flutter. First, creating a modern UI like a mobile app is very easy, and Flutter supports all platforms such as mobiles, desktops, and web. Therefore, Flutter is popular OSS, and there are a lot of information in the internet. Here is Flutter's total number of stars in GitHub. Uh, it is in top 20 in the GitHub ranking. And next, Flutter provides the custom embedded API layer for porting to specific platforms. Therefore, the porting is very easy. In addition, Flutter needs few dependent libraries. Basically, it needs only OpenGL or EGL library. Finally, software license is BSD3. And next, I will explain why the combination of Flutter and Wireland is good. Flutter, especially the raw layer, it usually draws graphics by using OpenGL or Vulkan. Other APIs, Flutter Embedder or Communication API, other Input Output API, and so on. Basically, as a Wireland client, all you have to do is creating an EGL communicating with Flutter framework and supporting the input output such as a mouse, touch, and keyboard. So it can be ported as a Wireland client very simply. And therefore, as for graphics, Flutter uses only EGL and doesn't use a Wireland protocol, so there are no display problems like other toolkit have. Here is some APIs of Flutter Embedder. The APIs are very simple. If you are interested, please check the source code. Let's move on to the next topic. In this time, we created the demo application at the UI like a tablet using Flutter. I will show you its demo video. In this time, I used NVIDIA's JetSonar board. Let's start. As you can see, it has the clock display and the app rancher like a tablet. Naturally, you can develop Flutter apps and run it on a Linux host desktop. This is typical Flutter sample app. Then, a build for ARM64 on the target device. And then install it uh, from remote VS Code to target device. The same app works in the ARM environment. You can also easily create a app like a music player. This is a mock music player app.
Uh, you can also uninstall the app from Remote Bridge Code. That's all my demo video. For your information, I will show the chart of Flutter's performance. This chart shows performances when running the demo apps shown in the video, from booting on JetSend Now. Each Flutter app uses around 100 MB of primary, and usage rate of CPU and GPU are not too high. Let's move on to the next topic. I will explain about details on our approach. Here is the architecture overview of the DEM app. The inside of the red frame is our developed software. In application framework layer, there are mainly two modules. Uh, this is uh, the graphic shell for Flutter module written in C++. The other is system UI written in Dart and C++. Uh, these modules provide system menus for users. The user application layer is for the user's application to be launched from the system UI. Uh, these are a Flutter app or other programs. System UI is the Flutter app written in Dart and C++. It's currently only for demo, so it has not enough functionality now. The future are application launcher, installing or installing user apps, and clock. So you can easily create a UI like this using Flutter. Uh, next, I will share the graphic shell for Flutter. As I mentioned, graphic shell has mainly three functions. The first is managing the Flutter engine. It uses the Flutter Embeddator APIs to manage a Flutter application project running on the Flutter engine. The second is Simple Window Manager. It runs as a desktop shell client on Western and creates easier surface for Flutter engine. In addition, it sends the events of users' input, such as a mouse, touch, and keyboard to Flutter engine. The others are communication between Dart and Platform's native programs, the system locker update, and so on. As for this module, we've been using the Flutter official source code at the platform independent port. Currently, we've been using Western as a Wayland compositor. Here is default Western desktop shell, so to replace it with our graphics shell, we use Western in configuration file. Here is the example of Western in file. By using client field in the uh, section field uh, like this, uh, you can freely use it as your own desktop shell. In addition, you can use and create custom field like this. Besides Western Ini, you need to return ready flag when a variant client here is ready to show using the Western API. And you can also get information from your Western Ini. Uh, by the way, I will explain about the official Flutter Linux desktop specification. The official Flutter for Linux uses VTK as the graphic shell because Flutter doesn't have traditional desktop widgets like open directories, choose files, servers 
the two main use and so on. So using ZDK, the developers can create traditional desktop apps and modern apps like mobile. I think this approach is reasonable. In addition, basically ZDK has already supported Wayland. However, in embedded systems, it doesn't require traditional desktop UI and other dependent libraries like X11. So, as for embedded systems, I think Wayland plus Flutter is simpler and better than official version. Next, I will explain about IPC and language binding in Flutter. You have some options. The first is using the Flutter API. APIs called method channel, event channel, and basic message channel are provided. And these are sync communication protocol between Dart and native program like C++. The second is the Dart FFI. Developers can use the Dart FFI library to call native C APIs. FFI standards for foreign function interface. The third is the Unix domain socket in .io. Unix sockets are uh, lighter than TCP IP sockets. Developers can use Unix domain socket in Dart. The others are using third-party libraries such as Debers gRPC. So next, I'll explain about this gRPC library. gRPC Dart is a gRPC library in Dart implementation. The owner is also Google. You can easily use gRPC in Dart by using this library. And then we've been contributing to support Unix domain socket in gRPC Dart. This function or pull request uses Unix domain socket for IPC and gRPC for external process communication. Unix sockets are lighter and better than TCP IP sockets when you use an IPC. Next, I will share about Flutter Engine. As I mentioned, Flutter Engine is the original rendering engine with memory skier and Dart virtual machine. We were using the OSS Flutter Engine as is. However, currently for the community doesn't support Linux ARM64 host. So we've been contributing to support Linux on ARM64 host. And then you can use the Flutter in ARM64 embedded systems now. Finally, I'll share about Flutter SDK. Flutter provides the Flutter SDK to develop and debug a Flutter app. However, like the Flutter engine, it doesn't support ARM64 host. Therefore, we've also been contributing to support multi-architecture host. We were especially focusing to support working on Linux ARM64 host and cross-building for ARM64 targets. Let's move on to the final topic. Here is the summary. I introduced the new GUI approach using Flutter in embedded systems. Our motivation and purpose is using Flutter in ARM64 and Linux embedded systems. Going forward, we will continue to contribute to Flutter's Linux support because Flutter for Linux is still a version now. Thank you for listening.